Some header. But Gerard! Oh, you beauty! What a headshot! What a headshot! Hello and welcome back to Onto the Ball. I'm Scott Nicholl. And, and I'm here to give my opinion on this week's devastating news that Liverpool have allegedly pulled out of the race to sign Jude Bellingham. Beyond devastating it is. It really is. However, the more you think about it, Jude's reputation was enhanced at the World Cup. His fee becomes stratospheric, certainly in terms of what Liverpool can afford under these owners, FSG. It's just been... A horrendous time for Liverpool fans to be thinking about the what ifs and the buts and what's going to happen in the summer. But to be honest, it's, it's no real surprise. Let's be honest. Under these owners, we've been used to living within our means, having the sustainable model rammed down our throats. And no matter what FSG do, no matter what Liverpool do, I always think the worst and I always fear the worst. And this is no exception, it really isn't. When you think about the Jude Bellingham deal, you'd see him getting close to Henderson at the World Cup, Trent Arnold in the World Cup, and you'd get excited. You'd allow yourself to get excited. And then, of course, you think about our owners and you think it's just never, ever going to happen. Why, after 13 years, would they all of a sudden throw caution to the wind, hand Jurgen Klopp the kind of money to get a deal like that over the line. It's in excess of 100 million. It's even touted as much as 130 million pounds. Um, so knowing the way FSG have operated in the last 13 years, you know that's us out of the running. Um, the reports on that broke on, I think it was Tuesday night, where that Liverpool are, are pulling out of the running. They need to spend that war chest elsewhere. And this is the bit that kind of confuses me a bit because there is not going to be any war chest fsg they just do not invest right we know that that doesn't mean that we won't get a minority investor in the meantime and that will free up some funds but until it happens we've just got to operate the way we do under fsg and that is skint absolutely skint all the time sell to buy which we've operated all the time people say you've bought Luis Diaz, that was because Mane was going. They say you've bought Darwin Nunes, Cody Gakpo. But for all of them, we've sold a Nico Williams, a Rian Brewster, um, a Dominic Solanke. All these players that people can't remember just to balance the books. It's not like we're out there spending 150, 200 million on these strikers. It's just always down to the net spend with Liverpool. And it's going to be no different now. We've just got to plan for life with, with FSG. It really is as simple as that. Um, and what that could mean for this summer is anyone's guess. People are saying that we might have the money for Jude Bellingham, but it's better spent elsewhere on a couple of players. But I don't even trust FSG to do that. Do you? Let me know in the comments. Let's let's get real. There's not going to be 100 million, 150 million, even 200 million to spend on three, four, five players. There just isn't. It would be outside of the norm of anything FSG have done in the past. Um, so I'm not holding my breath. At the end of the day, like I say, under FSG, we've got to be creative. That creativity is probably going to come from some outgoings. We are not going to go into next season with five to six top class forwards. We're just not going to do it. As soon as we signed Cody Gakpo, I smelt a rat. I thought... We're going to balance the books here. Um, people might say, oh, it's because we knew Bobby Firmino was leaving. It doesn't matter. We still do not spend that kind of money. Um, those fans are onto the ball that watched the December video of when we signed Cody, Cody Gakpo. I said, I will put money on it that Luis Diaz is getting sold. That might have changed now that he's been injured all season, so his value might not be as high. But I imagine we were trying to be clever, be cute in the market, sell a Luis Diaz for around 90 million. You've replaced him already with Cody Gakpo for just under 40 million. Good business, someone might say. And that would free up some money, maybe to have a tilt at Jude Bellingham. But Cody Gakpo looks like he might be the replacement for Firmino now. So that leaves us with Jota, Luis Diaz and Mo Salah. We've got to be honest here. One of them three are going to leave. Jota, Diaz, Salah. Now that we haven't 
qualify for Champions League next year. It's almost mathematically possible, impossible now. Uh, we need Man United or Newcastle to lose half their remaining games and we need to win all our games. So it's no coincidence that's how this report's come out this week that that deficit of Champions League money, which could be anything from 60 to 100 million pounds. Let's get real. We posted a profit of 7 million uh, in the May annual report. So we know we're skin. We know we haven't got a, a nest egg there that's built up over a couple of years, 50, 60, 70 million. We know that. It's in the proof is in the pudding in the published reports. So you need to brace yourself in absence of any kind of minority investors that we're going to have to sell to buy. Now that we've not got Champions League football, I would not bet against Mo Salah leaving. And it might be a double-edged sword. He might want to leave as well as we want to cash in on him. We might have given that big contract which has probably upset the dressing room, let's be honest. We've given that big contract to have some sale value. He's got a resale value now. If someone like PSG comes in, they want to sign a marquee sign-in, that will sell a lot of shirts, a bit of kudos for the club. Mo Salah would be perfect. And without Champions League football, and at the age of 30, uh, it really would be now or never for Mo Salah as well. So he might as well want to leave and, and move for Champions League football. So what kind of resale value would he have? Maybe 50 million at a push. Um, you've got to remember he's 31 in June, so 50 million might be stretching a bit. Diogo Jota, he's only 26. He could have big resale value, 50, 60 million, maybe, if we're lucky. He's been linked with Newcastle. And then Luis Diaz, you'd like to think he would be upwards of around 90 million if there was a Barcelona, a Real Madrid, a Bayern Munich interested with him. So that's our only hope this summer is to get creative and have some outgoings totaling maybe 100 million. But even then, we're only looking forward to, a, what, a 40, 50 million Mason Mount. He's not wetting my appetite. I don't know about any of you Reds. Um, Yuri T. Elements is apparently available on a free. There's a couple of lads from Eintracht Frankfurt available for free that have been linked with Liverpool. It's not with. It's not cut and dry yet. The Oxlade Chamberlain will definitely leave. So beggars can't be choosers. We could end up giving him. Uh, another year's contract or two-year contract, would, which would be the wrong thing to do. James Milner, a year's contract. Um, but another thing we've mentioned in the podcast, me and Travis, is Trent Arnold. Everyone keeps tipping him to have a shot in midfield. I think we can kiss goodbye to that now. As I said on the last podcast, there was an opportunity there to try him in midfield. Jurgen Klopp never took it. He wasn't interested he obviously had a little shot in midfield for England. Jurgen Klopp was scathing of that. So we can kiss goodbye to that. Trent Arnold is staying at a right as a right back. Um, but I also posted a short about him potentially being sold because he'd have a high resale value. And this isn't me. I don't want any of this. I'm purely talking under FSG. We're going to have to get creative. Or the experience we've had of challenging for the top honours under Jurgen Klopp, it, it, it really is. It's all but gone. Um, but in terms of Jude Bellingham, this might be a bit of a red herring. Obviously, we pulled out of signing Allison. We pulled it. Uh, we signed him. We pulled out of signing Van Dyke. We signed him. Uh, obviously, people are still hoping that we might be in for Jude Bellingham and this is a ploy to try and drive the price down. I still cannot see it. Without Champions League football, unless FSG change the way they operate, show some ambition to challenge and back Jurgen Klopp they have to do something different and I just can't believe that they will I cannot believe it without the Champions League football we're actually going to be in debt like I just mentioned earlier we probably can't even afford Salah's contract now he's paid almost double what anyone else is he's on about 350 grand a week the next highest is probably Van Dijk on 200 grand so he would be an easy out to free up wages for two marquee signings, so to speak. So all I'm saying is strap yourself in, Reds, for a, a crazy summer. Um, who knows where we're going to be come 1st of September? Who knows who's going to have left? I think there's going to be some angry fans at some unexpected outgoings. There's going to be angry fans at under par signings that they don't trust they're going to be successful and take us to the next level for the club. Um, I don't know what way it's going to go. But of course, along the way, we could still have a minority investor come in that could free up some funds. But who would even trust FSG to leave them funds in the club for us to spend? They'd probably take them um, 
for the in their own back pocket and they'd have every right to it's their money it's their club they can do what they want so um i'll just end this little 10 minute video with an fsg out uh, let us know in the comments what you think if you trust fsg who you'd like to sign in the summer if you think jude bellingham deal is dead um and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and me and travis will see you in the next live over the weekend have a good weekend guys Better. But Jared!